Picture this! You're a survivor of a massive crash. A blimp you were on was destroyed by your enemies, and you wake up and find a pretty cyborg woman helping you up. And then you find some more cyborg women, and more, a few more here and there. Yeah, you can see where this is going, so I'll just stop here. You'd think after playing X-Dive, I wouldn't fall into the gotcha genre for a long time. But as it turns out, sometimes there are games that can just be, dare I say, fun. Even with those elements attached to it. If it's not fun, why bother? Nikkei is one such game. This is such a broken record to say when people hear it, but the reason I got into Nikkei wasn't because of the fucking women with their massive fat tits, gigantic asses, and lovely meaty thighs, but actually because it's a shooter. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, there's some beautiful ladies here, but it's also fun. So you're probably asking how I got hooked and why I keep playing it. Well, I suppose it's time to get into that, huh? Unfortunately, I can't really go through the game with this gotcha without making a new account, since the way it's structured. So, here's the part of the story I will tell you about. Nikkei takes place in a far future where a presumed alien android race called Raptures have overrun the planet. Raptures attack anything made by humans and quickly bring their facilities to the ground. Humanity's best hope for survival was to make a giant underground facility and live there, which they do for approximately 50 years before the game starts. Raids are taken to the surface to find and stop the raptures, but there's been little movement in that field. You are a male commander who just graduated and was put on the field. So as I stated, you woke up from a freak accident and lost a lot of your memories, making you an ideal blank slate. I don't want to get too into the story, because despite the fact that it's good, a great man once said, since I have more time, I will write a shorter review. The gist of it is, you treat Nikkeis like people, and that makes them perform better. That's it. I mean, that's how it works in the military. I don't know why it took them 50 years of making Nikkeis to get back to that, but hey, sometimes you need to relearn stuff from history. Oh, and a bunch of depressing and crazy twists happen as you play. So you may also wonder, why are all the Nikkeis female? You know exactly why, you porn addict. The boobs are shockingly secondary to Nikkei, as there's a lot going on under the bra, I mean hood, I mean hood, than you think. So let's jump into the gameplay. Also, it's because female brains apparently synchronize with the nanomachines better than male brains. Yeah, that's the explanation, so... Okay, there you go, there. Don't you feel enlightened? So now comes the question you gotta ask. Does this butt game have any meat on its cheeks? Yes, actually, it does. You point... Hold the button down, and shoot. You ever play a shooter? There you go. That's all there is at the cheeks, but now we're getting to the thighs of the game. All characters have a thing called a burst. This is a 1-2-3 sequence where you can do some kind of on-screen attack or buff that will help your entire team. How you build teams is basically reliant on this system. When you go through all three bursts, you enter full burst, which is when a bunch of skills activate, and all the Nikkeis aim at your cursor. All characters also have skills that can activate during some automatic criteria. Sometimes it's when you're in a full burst, or reload, or stare at their ass, or fire your entire magazine, some kind of criteria like that. You can switch between your squad of five with dedicated bound keys, and can also force all of them to stop attacking if there's some kind of screen-clearing attack and they need to hide behind cover. Oh yeah, I didn't mention that this is a cover-based shooter. All I'm saying is a Gears of War clone with Nikkei's would go absurdly hard and hey shift up if you're looking for someone hey i i i know a guy it's me i'll do it with that the way the game plays is pretty straightforward outside of combat missions are done on small overworlds where you move your character around and fight raptures as you go there is thankfully some mission variety to keep things interesting such as capture points where you stop raptures from capturing a point this one is fun there's also wall defense where you defend a wall from enemies for a minute and a half. This one is not fun. There's also tons of different enemy types that have shields, stuns, tractor beams to fuck you over. Ugh. I also really like how imaginative the raptures are. They all seem to be like corrupted life. It's really freaky seeing jellyfish shaped ones or spiders crawling everywhere. I really like how these creatures look. Hey hey, speaking of things that look good. When you get to a point where you can recruit Nikkeis, you get one free 10 roll and a guaranteed SSR unit, which is the one you should want to get. With my first roll, I got... Selene! Anyway, the next roll, I got one of the best characters in the game, Scarlet. 
than other crazy units like Snow White, Haran, Dorothy, and Pepper. Yeah, uh, this game spoiled me. Big time. For context, normally banners have a rate of 4% to get any SSR unit. 10 SSR units into my game, and 4 of them were Pilgrims. Pilgrims are insanely hard to get. I mean, literally a 0.0625% chance every roll. And somehow, I got 4 of them! Now I get what you're thinking. Okay, okay, you're a lucky bitch, aren't you cool? Yeah, I, I know I am. I know I'm cool. It's not like you don't have a good amount of ways to get new characters for free. You can get them from friends on a social banner, and after 40 rolls you can set up a wish list to guarantee 15 units you'd want to get from the three major companies. By the way, there's three major companies that make Nikkeis. Nisilis, Elysian, and Tetra. Pilgrims are their own special category. If you're also insane, don't worry, there's a paid banner. I don't know how the paid banner works because I'm not a whale. That's because I'm Captain Ahab! So I hunt these whales down with my insane luck. What are they gonna do? Spend more money? Hey, speaking of characters, maybe I should talk about them. I have some favorites, so I'll highlight them for you. Pepper is a sweet nurse character who really goes over and under to make sure a patient recovers properly. She's also a shotgun user, has a very bubbly and happy personality, and a dump truck ass with meaty thighs. But outside of that, she's one of the better healers in the game. I think the third best. For those of you that know me, you'll know that this is the second nurse robot character named after some kind of spice I like. Because I also like Cinnamon from Mega Man X. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? Senti is another favorite of mine who is a tall Scandinavian girlfriend. No, seriously, she's massive. She's probably the tallest Nikkei in the whole game. Senti has a fun ability where she has tons of shields generated to protect you, which makes her a wonderful defense unit. Now, Pepper gets my heart pounding, and Senti starts getting me to breathe heavily. Luckily, I do have a character that makes me go... My favorite in the entire game is Scarlet. She has a sword, is a nomad, drinks a lot, and makes farms. What is she? Did you say a Ronin? No. No, that is stupid. She's a Wisconsinite. That's right! Scarlet is a true-blooded Wisconsinite. Just like me! But in all seriousness, Scarlet is a fun character and I love how she is. Her only big flaw is her reload time is massive, and she's reloading a sword. Other than that, Scarlet is an angel. Also, character squads do a thing that I drool over, which is that they all follow motifs. For instance, the Infinity Rail squad are all named after fuel types. Diesel should be obvious, but Soline is part of gasoline, and Brit is part of hybrid. Talentum is named after world currencies, with Rupee, Dala, and Yan. My favorite team is Team Matisse, which is named after mathematicians Laplace, Drake, and Maxwell. They also have another motif, which is that each member has a primary color for their design, blue, red, and yellow respectively. I love this kind of shit, and it adds so much character to this game. There's one thing I'll give Nikkei, is that I know how basically everything works. There's a nice gradual flow of unlocking stuff, and you're not bombarded with shit constantly. So I appreciate Nikkei not being stupid and throwing everything at you. Hey, speaking of that, let me throw everything at you. So with side stuff in the underground facility called the Ark, there's a lot to do here. Tribe Tower lets you climb up and fight for rewards, including the reward to get an item called a mold that lets you get a specific SSR character from a specific manufacturer. Arena, you sit and watch teams beat each other up. Not much to say here, it's just watching a fight. Interception, you refight bosses for really good gear. And Simulation Room, you hit buttons to increase your power and get sick rewards, but it's solely dependent on being more engaging if you want to do hard mode or not. Lost Sector is my favorite because it's not a daily, yet it's a map with puzzles on it alongside fighting raptures. Also, the music here rules. Hey, hey, to continue the trend with music, let's talk about the Outpost. This is a small hub world where you can build many buildings to help keep the Nikkeis entertained and happy. You can also see them over on the map, either defending the base or walking around on their days off. 
There's also unique character interactions you can view here, and they're usually hilarious. You get to see how certain Nikkeis react with others, with brand new ones being made constantly. It's fun to see Nikkeis you wouldn't expect interacting with each other with all their quirks in check. There are two shops in Nikkei, one that houses the in-game currency shop and the other that has the whale currency. The in-game currency one houses the pity system and other currencies you don't need to pay for, so you can easily get either a spare body to enhance the Nikkeis you have, or another chance to get an SSR character via the molds. Like the characters themselves being live 2D rigs glued together, bosses are built very similarly. However, they decided to go all out with it. These bosses are super segmented and have tons of moving parts on them. Not those kind of moving parts, you horny asshole. But they are super well animated, and I get a kick out of it. From crows and jets flying in before the fight, to walls being shattered, to bosses being literal buildings and turning into massive land-crawling turtles. Holy shit, these bosses are so cool. As well, the fights are usually fun too, Bosses have tons of parts on them that you need to shoot down first, like external guns or missile launchers or even just exposed cores. They also have some kind of attack that can involve forcing your entire team to hide behind cover. Honestly, bosses are really fun in this game and they serve as really good capstones to chapters. So if you're stuck on the campaign, what else is there to do? That's where events come in, which are mini-sodes that last about two to three weeks. So how do these events work? That's the semi-disappointing part. These events don't really bring anything new to the table in terms of gameplay. It's usually just really well-made or written cutscenes, plus your Nikkei's randomly finding raptors. I can't think of a single one besides possibly the current one running right now, Red Ash, that at least has a unique enemy show up. Too bad I can't show you! These events are gone! No footage! Long story short, School of Lock was good, Dazzling Cupid was dumb, and ACPU Freeze was hilarious. I wanted to talk about the near event, but I literally started playing the game like a day before it ended. I have nothing to say there. Tubi's ass is really big, but that's it. That That's it. Oh, before I talk about the ones I can show you, that's the thing that this game has. If an event was really important, or just adorable, they can put it in the archives, and you can complete current events running right now, and use the film reel as reward currencies for looking at the older ones. With that, one of the ones they recently added was Bow Wow Paradise. This is about the dog girl Nikkei Biscuit trying to collect all the dogs from the Humane Society after the leader of the dogs, Max, instructs all the dogs to freedom. It is a super, super, super adorable story with puppies galore and cute interactions. Overzone is another one that, man, I, I don't want to talk about it too in depth because it's amazing. It covers wars, you know, along with PTSD, assisted suicide, insanity, guilt, self-destruction. It's really good. Events sometimes can be so large they also feature mini-games. Overzone had a mini-game that was a point-and-click adventure, but Red Ash has a vampire survivor clone called Memory of Goddess. How do I feel about it? Yeah, I've spent hours playing this, so I can safely say Memory of Goddess and its music are really good. One thing I wish was really good was the dubbing. Any flaw you can think of with any English dub in any anime is here in spades. For instance, there's a lot of language completely changed. The protagonist is referred to as gender neutral, even though there's cutscenes showing a man and accidental slip-ups where Nikkei's refer to him as a guy. Plus, there's literal stories where he fucks and comes in the Nikkeis, so... Uh-huh. As well, there's a lot of moments where the dubbing is just... unfinished. Originally, you were going to be able to pick your team's name. But, as of release, it's always going to be the counters. However, even though you have no choice now, they didn't bother dubbing it in. So you have a lot of moments like... Then... Squad. It's really bad, and I think it's like that in Korean and Japanese, too. So that's three places they need to fix it. 
If I'm also being honest, there's not really a voice actor or actress I'm super thrilled by. They all seem to be doing alright or given bad directions. Like Lisa Ortiz is in this game, but neither Nike she voices has a really standout performance. Which is a shame, too. She's one of my favorite voice actresses, but her performances aren't as good as something like her Lena Inverse or Deedlet voices. There are some moments with a few Nikes like Senti, Soda, and Biscuit, but otherwise the acting just feels like... Not necessarily soulless, but it's lacking some sort of enthusiasm, or it's a little dissonant with the characters. I just hope that with Shift Up being worth eight times its value now, we'll use their money to correct these weird dubs. Also, in the current event, what does Red Hood say? What about you, swordsman? Anything you want? Hmm. Sword person. Yeah, maybe don't change it to stupid shit like this, especially when Red Hood doesn't say that. There's also an ending cutscene in the Red Ash story that is horribly timed with the dub. So yeah, they really don't seem to care too much with the English dub for this game. I'm even considering playing it in one of the different languages in the future, but right now, I mean, ugh, it could use some work. But hey, you know what is cool? The fact that this game doesn't fucking waste your time. Did you accidentally level up the wrong character when you have a three-star unit that can go up to level 200? Oh, you poor thing. Well, with 10 gems, you can say, hey, can I have exactly all of that back? And you get it. As you can see with the footage of me resetting Pepper's level and getting Red Hood up to 150 very quickly. Also, look at how fast this is! I'm just holding the button down! I love it. As well, you don't have to level up all your Nikkeis, just five of them. There's a synchronization device so that all the Nikkeis you put in there will be the matching level of the lowest level Nikkei in that group of five. Hey, you know that boss you beat? Fuck it. Beat it again. Oh wait, you can just skip it because you already did it. Hey look, you failed the challenge. Well, you can keep trying until you're done because we're not going to get rid of the chance to do it. Like, dude, this game's really nice about stuff like this. Oh, also, it's fast to do dailies in this game. Like, really fast. 10 to 20 minutes to get all the necessary things done. But even if you push it all the way and do Every single one, even if it's unneeded, it's still under an hour. Almost around 45 minutes. Wow. Someone with little time like me appreciates that. With that, buy my action platformer game. Hey, I gotta put a plug somewhere. One thing that Nikkei offers the ability to do is talk to your Nikkeis to level them up in a special way. They give you snap conversations, and whether you answer correctly or not, they'll get their attraction levels up. But you'll get more if you're right and you know how to read these women. I know that's already an impossible task in real life, but luckily you get two options to choose from in Nikkei. As you rank them up higher and higher, you eventually get specialized stories with five episodes each for a unique tale with you and the Nikkei you're bonding with. Are these stories good? Yeah. There's a few standout ones. So I'll start with my favorite. I'll have timestamps on screen or below in the video player if you wish to skip her story for spoilers. Okay, your time is up. Scarlet. My goodness. I'm really starting with her because her story is what made me really like her. Sure, the game handed her to me and she's one of the best units in the entire game, but this story is where I really started to like her. Scarlet's story starts with her kidnapping you after you spent I shit you not, a week drinking with her and partying. She kidnaps you because she wants to take you to the surface with her. When there, she teaches you all kinds of farming techniques like gathering manure, getting honey from a hive, tending to the fields, you know, stuff that a Wisconsinite would know. Scarlet reveals that due to her age, memory degradation is entirely possible, so she leaves farms to keep the memories alive on the surface. As you finish the farm, you find out from Rappy, Neon, and Anise that they're coming to get you. So Scarlet tells you the best phrase. It's drinking time! You get absolutely shit-faced with Scarlet, and both you and her start picking each other's brains for answers. Scarlet tells the commander she loves being with him, but he and her are in completely different worlds, so it's just gonna be hard to stay together. As well, she never wants to go back to the Ark because the planet is so beautiful. 
when you get absolutely 100% starting to fall asleep and vomit everywhere shit-faced. Scarlet tells you to go to sleep, but what happens is instead you get closer to her. And you just rest your head on her shoulder, and she asks, Hey, do you have a good time? You say you love it. And Scarlet asks you to keep that memory alive. Anise, Neon, and Rappy wake you up, and Scarlet's gone. With Scarlet leaving behind an absurd amount of surface meat like venison and beef, that's hard to get on the Ark. Anise wants to sell it, but you tell her to back off as it's a gift. Rappy then examines you to make sure nothing crazy happened, and you're fine. Except you got a hangover, and you gained a few pounds. This story just... Fuck. <laughs> Did it hit so hard. I wanted to stay with my drunk farm nomad GF, man. She was so nice. Scarlet didn't treat you like shit. She taught you how to adapt and survive, and told you how to be self-sufficient. She never once had you in danger. She treated you with kindness. But unfortunately, the tragedy struck that you're in a completely different world from her. You both can't stick together, man. It's... That pulled on my heart really badly. I really loved Scarlet's story. For a porn addict game, this game decided to jerk my heart off, and I was really romanticized by Scarlet in this. And to see it not work, man, it... It broke my heart. It really did. Now I want to get to another Nikkei whose story really got my heart, too. Pepper. So let's uh, run the same little buffer here with timestamps. Okay, we got it. Good. Pepper's story involves you getting injured and having to go to the hospital. While there, Pepper wakes you up and has an odd request for you. A patient in the hospital doesn't want to get surgery unless Pepper gets a boyfriend. So she outright asks the commander if he's willing to do it. Of course I fucking say yes. Why the hell not? The hospital starts to get jealous of you being her boyfriend as word spreads fast. The kid who asked Pepper to get a boyfriend also talks to you, saying she's not optimistic about the surgery with a 5% chance of success, to which you reply by saying 5% is still better than zero. Eventually, you start to recover and the child has surgery, all the while you talk to Pepper to keep up the charade. However, the child won't wake up from the surgery despite it being a success. You remember that when the child chatted with you that the kid likes citrus splendamin. If you're wondering, splendamin is one of those made-up foods that they made up for this time. So you tell Pepper to go on a date with her, to get some of it, and put it in the kid's room. It works. The girl wakes up and Pepper tells her that you are to thank. Pepper tells the girl the truth, that you're a fake boyfriend. But the girl says why did it have to be fake if you both like each other? Pepper, after taking care of the child, tries to find you before you check out, and she asks if instead, they can be a genuine couple. Of course I said yes, why the hell not? And it ends with you embracing her. Pepper's story is ultra cute. It shows she's willing to do anything to help a patient. It also turning into a fake boyfriend becoming a real one story is something I'm a huge fan of. It also helps that Pepper is never mean to you and nor is trying to keep you away at times due to it being fake. It's a sweet story. I liked it a lot. That's why I'm talking about it. Pepper is very cute. That's... I think that's all I just need to say about her. What a sweetheart, man. Also, I got the girl in the end. Like, hey, hey, yeah, all right. I'm going to lightning round these other Nikkeis because, to be honest, I could have an entire video dedicated to just their stories. So let's do this fast. Guillotine is hilarious because she is in an entirely different world. She acts like there's some organization after her called the Big O. Though Guillotine sees that ye not guilty after a simulated battle with her. Guillotine's story is funny because it's like leading a schizo on, but right at the end, she gets hit with a dose of reality, and it's so funny. It has such a good buildup up to that moment. Like, they made a completely new face for her in that one scene. It is so funny. Drake also, holy shit, I don't even want to spoil it. It is probably the funniest story in the game. Oh my gosh, even if you don't want to play this game, just look it up on an upload of YouTube. Drake's brain is pure mashed potatoes, and my god, is it a ride with her. I also find Senti's very endearing because her story is about her trying to be a really good architect. However, because of you, you actually make it a little harder for her. But then, you and her finally get on the same page, and her dream starts to become a reality. It's very sweet. Thank you, Nordic six-feet-tall girlfriend. 
Trust me when I say there's pages upon pages I could add to this. Even the ones where you get a little too excited. But I don't think it's good to keep going, so it's probably time to end it. So, what is Goddess of Victory Nike? Well, it's a fun gotcha. I can at least attest to that. It has fun characters, good gameplay, good art, amazing music, pretty unique graphics, not very frustrating, and really fast to get everything done. I really like this game, which is why I'm even more worried about it as I play it. I do not like games for service, just from a moral standpoint. If Nikkei goes down, I better see an offline version. With the company that made it, Shift Up, being worth eightfold its value, they hopefully can start making an offline version to keep some of that. And fix the shitty dubbing here and there, and make Tribe Tower and Arena more engaging, and uh, any other error I didn't catch. Hey, can you guys just do everything for me? That'd be awesome. It has its faults, but the actual core of this game is fantastic. Hey, speaking of things with faults but a good core, you should check out my games. Necrolepsy is an action platformer with momentum and juggling enemy mechanics. You can get it on Steam. There's also Draco Blood, an action RPG which I'm working on porting over to the Godot engine to continue development. And perhaps something smaller and new made in Godot as well. Keep it on your radar at my Patreon. I don't see myself slowing down on Nikkei anytime soon. If that's the case, expect more reviews of this game as it continues. I don't want to keep old, out-of-date reviews on my YouTube channel. I would never do something like that. Like, that's just something I would never do. Plus, this game is very fun. If it's not fun, why bother? So with that, see you next time with something completely different. I'm but a lowly shotgun user, I cannot do anything about these. You are such a- Oh, oh god. my god. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst one yet. <laughs>